Hello there, boys and girls. Welcome to lesson 2.1. Place the first digit. Our essential question is how can you tell where to place the first digit of a quotient without dividing? Now remember, quotient is the answer to a division problem. Let's go ahead and begin. Our first question that we're going to start with is question number two in our Go Math book. And the question says 457 divided by 4. Now I want you to look at this and see that we have four groups of 100, five tens, and seven ones. So we're going to start out by dividing our four groups of 100. Now if you think about it, if I have four people I'm dividing, my four groups of 100, I know that each one can have a group of 100. So I know I'm going to place my first digit right above my hundreds place. That's what our essential question is. Where do we put our first digit in our quotient? We're going to start by placing our first digit right up here in our hundreds place because I have four mats, also known as four groups of 100, and I can share them with four people. So now if you look over here, I have some words over here. These words are very important and they're going to actually help us remember our steps in division. The first one is divide, the second is multiply, the third is subtract, the fourth will be check, the fifth would be called bring down. And the way you can remember that is think about does McDonald's sell cheese burgers? If you want to remember your steps, does McDonald's sell cheese burgers? So let's start out with D, divide. I know I have four mats or four groups of 100 and I'm going to divide it between four people. So I'm going to go ahead and I can say my first answer spot will be in my hundreds place. Each person will have one group of 100. That's my division step. The next step is multiply. So we're going to multiply that one group of 100 per person times 4 will be 4 groups of 100. Now I placed it directly below my hundreds place. My next step is subtract. So I just set myself up to subtract right here. I'm going to subtract those four one hundreds because I've already used them. I'm taking them away from my um, pieces, my four mats. They're done. I've already divided them up. Now we're going to do the step check. I can see that I have zero mats left. That's less than four people or four groups, therefore I divided correctly. Now my next step is called bring down. I'm going to bring down or call regroup. We're going to bring down my tens place, my five groups of ten. Those are five strips or five long pieces. Now I have five long pieces or five groups of ten and I have four people to share them with. So I'm going to go back to step one, divide. If I have five groups of ten, and I want to share them with four people, I know each person can get one group of 10. So I'm going to put one up here above my tens place. I know each one got one group of 10. My next step is going to be multiply. We're going to multiply what we just put up here in our quotient. So it's going to be one times four would be four. So go ahead and write four right up below your five. And next we're going to subtract. 5 minus 4 is 1 left. That's one group of 10 left. So let's check. Is 1 less than 4? Yes, so there's no more 10s to divide. So now we have to regroup those ten, that one group of 10 left. So we're going to bring down now our 1s. That's called bring down or regroup. So now we're breaking it up into 17 1s. So now we're going to go back up to our first step, which is divide. I have 17 ones, and I'm going to share them with four people. So 17 divided by 4, each group is going to receive 4 apiece. Because if I have 17 ones, and I share them with four people, each would get 4. Because 4 times 4, let's multiply, is 16. I use up 16 of them. Let's subtract to see the remainder. Okay, let's check. Is 1 less than 4? Yes, it is. So we can go ahead and say that that is our remainder because we have nothing left to bring down because we've already used our hundreds place, our 5 groups of 10, and our 7 groups of 1. 
So we would say 457 divided by 4 would be 114 with the remainder of 1. And if I wanted to check my work to make sure my quotient is correct, you can always say 114 times 4 equals 456. And then when you add your one remainder in, that would equal 457. So my answer is correct. Okay, let's go on to question four in our GoMath book. The question is 204 divided by nine. Now let's stop and think if I have two mats or two groups of 100 and I have to share it with nine people, there's no way that each person is going to get a mat or a group of 100. Therefore, I will not start my quotient answer in my hundreds place. I'm going to start it in my tens place because we're going to be regrouping. We're going to be breaking this up into 20 tens. So now I have 20 tens. That's what I'm going to start out with. So my quotient answer needs to start directly above my tens place. So now let's look. If I have 20 groups of 10 and I want to share them with 9 people, I would know that each person would get 2. So that's my division step right there. We divided. Now we're going to multiply step 2. I'm going to multiply 2 times 9, and that's going to equal 18. So I've used up 18 of my long strip pieces. We're going to subtract to see how many strip pieces are left over. I have two strips left over. Let's check. Is 2 less than 9? Yes, it is. Therefore, I cannot divide these two strips of 10 anymore because there's just two of them. So we need to regroup. We need to break them into ones. So we're going to bring down our one place, which is four. Let's bring down that four. And now you can see that we have 24 ones left to divide. So we're going to go back up to step number one, which is divide. I now have 24 ones. I'm going to share them with nine people. So let's list our multiples of nine. 9, 18, 27. 27 is too many, so let's go back. 9, 18. That's going to be two groups of 9. So let's put a 2 up here in our quotient. That's my division step. Now we're going to multiply. 2 times 9 is 18. I've used up 18 ones. We're going to subtract to see how many ones are left. 24 minus 18 is going to be 6. Let's check. Is 6 less than 9? Yes, it is. And the, I only have 6 ones left. I can't share them with 9 because, remember, division has to be equal groups. There's nothing left to bring down. Therefore, the remainder will be 6. All right, so our answer would be 22, remainder 6. Now, if ever you see a question that's written horizontally, don't worry about it. We can just rewrite it like how we're used to seeing a division problem. I'm going to write 520 divided by 8. That means I have 8 groups that I'm dividing my 520 items with. So let's go ahead and start with division, our first step. Start with your hundreds place. I have 5 groups of 100. Can I give one group of 100 to each of my groups, each of my 8 groups? No, there's only 5. So let's go ahead and look at how many tens? I have 52 groups of 10, also known as 52 long pieces. If I have those 52 long pieces, also known as strips, and I want to share them with eight different groups, how many would each group get? Well, I know my multiples of eight, and I know eight times six is 48, and that's really close to 52 without going over. So I'm going to say I can give each of my eight groups six groups of 10, also known as six strips. So that was my division step. Step two is to multiply. I'm gonna multiply to see how many of those strips I used. Six times eight is 48. You're gonna write it directly below our 52 tens. And let's check that off. And now we just set ourselves up to subtract. So I have 52 minus 48. When you wanna subtract, I'm going to regroup there and I'm gonna have four is left over. I have four groups of ten left over. I can't split up those four tens with eight groups because remember it has to be smaller. If this is smaller you know you, you, you divided correctly. So that was our checking step. We just checked four is less than eight. So now we're going to bring down the ones place. So I'm going to bring down 
my zero. And now I have 40 ones, which is the value of four tens. So eight can go into 40, or if I have 40 ones or 40 units, and I wanna put them in eight groups, I know each group is going to get five units a piece or five ones a piece. Let's multiply just to be sure. Five times eight is 40. We're gonna subtract and that is less than eight, which means I used up all my pieces. There's nothing left to bring down because I've already brought down my ones place and I've already divided with my tens place. So therefore the correct answer will be 65 each. When you can quickly check that 65 times eight is 520. So we got it correct. All right, let's come down to our problem solving question for number nine. It says the school theater department made $2,142 on ticket sales for the three nights of their play. The department sold the same number of tickets each night and each ticket cost $7. How many tickets did they sell each night? So there's some information in here we don't need to know. We don't need to know how much each ticket costs because we know how much money they made. We know that they made $2,142. That $7 is just there to trick you. What we want to know is how much they made each night. And we know that there were three nights that they did their play. So we're going to have $2,142 divided by three nights. And that'll tell us how many tickets they sold per night. So let's go ahead and get started. Our first step is to divide. We're going to look in our thousands place. I have two groups of a thousand, but I have three nights. So we know that we cannot give each night a 1,000 because there's only two. Therefore, we're going to look at the 21 hundreds. So we have 21 groups of 100, and we have three nights. Well, I know my multiples of 3, and I know 3 times 7 is 21. So I'm going to divide this 21 divided by 3 will give 700 each night, or 7 in my hundreds place. There's my multiplying step. Let's go ahead and subtract to see how many hundreds that we used. 7 times 3 is 21. So I used all 21 of my hundreds. Subtract. And now let's check, is zero less than three? Yes, it is, so we are correct so far. So our next step is gonna bring down. We're gonna bring down my four groups of 10. So let's go ahead and drop the four. So now I have four groups of 10, divided into three different nights. So I know that I have enough for each night to have one group of 10. So I'm going to put a one right up top here in my tens place. There's my division. Now let's multiply step two. One times three is three. So we use three of our groups of 10 out of the four. Let's subtract. There's one left over, one group of 10. So now let's check. Is one less than three? Yes, it is. So we're doing good so far. Next step is going to be bring down. We're going to bring down our two ones and we're going to be regrouping this into 12 ones. So drop down this two ones and now we have a total of 12 ones. We just regrouped right here. So we have 12 ones now to divide with my three nights. And I know 12 divided by 3 is 4. So let's multiply to be sure. 4 times 3 is 12. We're going to subtract to see if there's any ones left over. There aren't any ones left over, so there's no remainder. There's nothing left to bring down, and we've checked zero is less than three. Therefore, they sold 714 tickets per night. And let's go ahead and do our next problem solving question. It says Andreas made $625 mowing yards. He worked for five consecutive days and earned the same amount of money each day. So how much money did he earn per day? Well, I know that if I divide $625 by five days, I would know the amount he made each day. So let's go ahead and start off with step one, divide. We're gonna divide our hundreds place first. Now, do I have enough? groups of 100 to put into five groups? Yes, I do. So therefore, my answer will start in my hundreds place. So if each group got one group of 100, 
There's my division. 6 divided by 5. 6 group of 100s divided into 5 groups. Each group is going to get 1 group of 100. Now we're going to multiply. 1 times 5 is 5. We used up 5 of our 100s. And let's subtract. There's 1 group of 100 left over. Let's check. Is 1 less than 5? It sure is. So we're going to check that off. And now let's bring down our next place value, which will be my tens place. I'm going to bring down my two groups of 10. So now what we're doing is we're regrouping. Now we have 12 groups of 10 because we had one group of 100. Remember that there are 10 hundred, 10 tens in 100. So 10 tens plus 2 tens is 12 tens. So therefore, we have 12 tens to divide. So if I have 12 long pieces or 12 strips of 10 and I want to divide them into five groups, each group will get two a piece. There's my division step. Now we're going to multiply to see how many we used up. 2 times 5 is 10. We used up 10 of our 10 pieces. Let's subtract to see what's left over. We have two groups of 10 left over. So let's check. Is 2 less than 5? Yes, it is. So now we can bring down our 1's place. I'm going to bring down this 5, drop it right there. So now we have 25 1's. We're going to go back up to step number one, and now we're going to divide the ones pieces. If I have 25 units, or 25 pieces of one, and I'm going to divide them into five groups, I know 25 divided by five is five. Let's multiply to see if we used them all. Five times five is 25. We're going to subtract to see if there's any left over. There's nothing left over, therefore, he made $125 per day. And that answer is reasonable. 125 times 5 would be a total of $625 total. Now tonight for homework, we're not having you do the backside. We'll be doing that tomorrow night. Tonight I just want you to rate yourself how you feel so far with the concept of division using the traditional way of long division. Put down if you feel like you're a novice, apprentice, practitioner, or expert at the top of your page. We will be doing this again tomorrow night for our other questions for more guided practice. All right, have a great night.